Are you looking to level up your author business? Are you pounding your head against a wall, wondering what your next step should be? Then join me, Daniel Wilcox. And me, Sasha Black, as we haul ass each week in a bid to level up. Level up. Come along for the ride as we delve deep into the business of writing, craft, entrepreneurship, and every level of the author journey. This is the Next Level Author Podcast. Hello, Achievers. This is episode 59 of the Next Level Author Podcast, a podcast where we hold each other to account and track our step-by-step progress as we level up our author business. My name is Sasha Black, and here with me every single week is... Daniel Wilcox. Hello, Daniel. Check-in. How are you? I'm good, Penelope. So, oh yeah, um, right. Just for clarity <laughs> for everybody listening, my fucking name is not Penelope. Uh, well, that's that's exactly what someone who's trying to hide their name would say. Just, I'm throwing it out there. Uh, it's a beautiful name. Don't shy away from it. Come on. You are so tiresome. There's Come nothing on, wrong with the name Penelope. It's just not Penny my Black. name. <laughs> You're a dick. You're an actual dick. Mm. Anyway, <clears throat> but yeah, um, I'm doing okay. I am. Um, I don't know. Uh, I was speaking to a friend last night and I, I don't know if this will resonate at all, but I, I discovered that I'm really tired of revelations. <laughs> <laughs> like, genuinely... Oh, you're going to hate this week's question? Like, bone tired of those <laughs> aha moments that keep popping into my head and being like, oh, this is like a thing that you should have known all along because it's obvious, but you've just not mm-hmm. been doing it. And I'm like, oh, like it just it just hurts. And like... I will say that you're probably the catalyst for it because it's pretty much since like this nonfiction stuff started since like September, October last year that like just so much stuff is just clicking into place and resonating with like who I fundamentally am as a person, like the stuff that I'm working on, like the things that excite me. Um, and it hurts. And I am at the point where I'm like, so- I'm just like, I'm so tired of being like, <laughs> yeah, this is where I have to go because this is where I've always really been going, but I've been fooling myself with other stuff. Um, I can just hear you going, Sasha! (laughs) Yes, Sasha! (laughs) Yeah, in that one, that Um, exact one. Sasha! Yeah, Yeah. (laughs) so that's, that's been like, it's been another week of, of that kind of stuff of, um, like exploring stuff for my nonfiction and a few projects that I've got in the background that I'm working on at the minute and then just being like, ah, yeah, because, you know, this, this connects to your things you were doing when you were like 13, 14 and just stuff that makes sense in life as to who you are um but i mean i mean outside of that uh, i've been it's been a good week I've, it's been a busy week um uh, among ghost writing i've been on um i appeared on the pen podcast or recorded the pen podcast uh this week with matthew harms um which is coming out very very soon um as people can see on my board behind i've done like a massive brain dump of things so i'm trying to like again streamline a lot of the stuff that i'm doing um i've been honoured to be asked to do the forward for uh, an anthology from a fellow horror publisher, uh, Michelle River over at Erie River Publishing for a thing that's coming up soon. <clears throat> and also managed to have an hour chat with her on Wednesday night on a live Q&A with my horror Facebook group. So it's been it's been busy and I feel like today I'm definitely suffering because uh, it has, it's just, it's just been pedal to the metal pretty much all week and I think I've earned the weekend off. <laughs> How about hey. you? Yeah, well, I would just, first of all, like to concur that our relationship is exhausting (laughs) because it, we just, it's just like constant, it's, I want to say pushing, but it's not pushing. It's more like a fucking juggernaut of like just shunting forward, like (laughs) keep going. Have you ever seen Takeshi's Castle? But have I ever seen? Takeshi's Castle. I have not. It's like a Japanese game show where like loads of people come together and do these like ridiculous like assault runs and games and things. And there's one where you have different levels of walls. Um, so you you've got like four different walls in front of you, and <laughs> one of them is fake, so you can run through it and go through that. And the others are like brick wall. And I feel like every time I get to like one of the brick walls, I'm like, right, I'm just gonna have a rest now. You just come on behind, and just go <laughs> fucking smash through it. And I'm like, okay, and I'm like running to the next one. <laughs> Which is also similar for people who haven't yet played it. Um, oh, what's it get? Oh, Fall Guys on PlayStation 4 and I think a few other platforms does the same game. But yeah, it's like one real wall and it's like, you're looking for the real wall. It's like, I'm just going to have a quick rest. No! Boom! So that's literally like, it's tiring. Like, it's amazing, but it's tiring. <laughs> oh, wow. I don't 
think I've ever quite been described <laughs> like that. But <clears throat> like a bulldozer. Yeah, um, it goes both ways. People... It does. Yeah, which is going to play very much into this week's question. Um, mm. It. I often get told I'm relentless, <laughs> and. Uh... <laughs> I feel like that's one of the words that describes anyone who <laughs> wants to be friends with me. You should know our friendship's going to be relentless. <laughs> Strap in, bring yes. in Hayla. Strap in, bitches. Right. Uh, yeah, my week has been. What's your week? Well, so last week I was telling you how I'd had like revelations, or I had them, I think, on the show that I had lost a lot of confidence with my fiction. And I feel like I do this thing where I have a problem and I keep it really to myself for like a really long time. And then it's only when I'm about to smash through that wall that I can then vocalize it. And I think it's because like, I don't have intellection in my top 10, but it is number 11. So it, it's like, I still do a lot of thinking in my head. And um, so, <clears throat> Since last week, <laughs> I, I vocalised it on both this podcast and my podcast. And I think just, like, I knew that there had been a problem, but I don't think I'd articulated it quite in the way that I articulated it in these conversations. And then literally, I then had a conversation, I think it was like a week prior, with a, with a lady called Crystal, who, worked, who does some work for Becca and is also an author. And she... <clears throat> gave me permission essentially to write shor a short story without reams of conflict. Cause obviously, you know, when people talk about short stories, you, when it's like a short story you're submitting for like an anthology or whatever, you know, it still has to have some kind of development or arc or whatever. And she was like, but if it is just as a reader magnet, she was like, you can show a scene or you can show like uh, just, you know, like a fun thing. It doesn't have to be full of conflict. She was like, these are readers who have already read your book. They just want a bit more. And so I have a two month gap between my first book and second book. And so I wrote a load of stuff that happens between that. And I and I put conflict in because there's like like banter tension conflict in in dialogues and stuff but there isn't like I was looking for a story that had like a complete full story arc and stuff and that was what was making it very difficult in my head anyway long and short of it is I wrote a 4,000 word reader magnet this week which is something oh yeah you did like yeah I fucking did and it is something that has literally plagued me for four years and <clears throat> in doing that coming looping back around in doing that, I think it has gone some way to unblock this psychological issue that I had with fiction. I also went back and reread Keepers and I've got a shit ton of sticky tabs that I need to like write up. I've started writing them up um, and I'm going to read Victor this coming week. Um, I think this coming week. I need to know maybe the week afterwards. Basically, I need to do it just before I'm about to do the final edit on Trey. Um, <clears throat> anyway, the conclusion is this week that I think I have learned two things. The first thing is that I never really talk about a thing until I'm almost got the solution, which is interesting for me personally. And then the second thing is I think I have, yeah, like unblocked a bit and I feel not, I wouldn't say I feel confident, but I've feel like I found the fun again if that makes sense because I had fun writing that and that was the problem like Trey was not fun to write because I'd put these these blockers in yeah so that's my really, really exciting so I, I'm muting my mic but just because again as people who listen to the show know that my MacBook likes to have hissy fits when I'm recording for some reason so I'm trying to get rid of the background buzz but that is that is um super exciting I think it's it's something that comes up a lot with um authors that I speak to it's just that that moment of like oh, why why is writing the fiction hard and then most of the time it comes back to like well are you finding the joy in the process like yeah. are, you, are you enjoying the thing that you're doing and mm -hmm. that can be the block because when you're writing a series like you're you know rightly doing you're working through the series and get bringing it to a close and because you don't want to just like leave a series half open because there's so much lost potential there but at the same time as in your case and as in my case with um the right as well there's a lot of uh 
evolution of the writer in in between those times so it's finding that balance of like being able to enjoy the story while still delivering the consistency of the story that you have written already mm -hmm. and it's a tough challenge it is a tough challenge but i feel like i'm starting to figure out how to make it fun again so that's cool um okay so uh do we have a success of the week we do. We have Tracy Lovelock, who says, I sent book six of my series off to my reader team. This will be the final book in the series, so I hope I get feedback that will help me make it rock. I feel pretty good about it, but I know there's always room to improve, um, which I love because obviously like every any book that you go out, there's always going to be room to improve. And I like that recognition of being happy with what you have done, but knowing that, you know, your readers are hopefully going to make it better. I feel like that was a success last week. <clears throat> I feel like it wasn't. <clears throat> But if it was, then double congratulations, Tracy. Yeah. And maybe we should delete yeah. that out of Slack. <laughs> <laughs> Fine. So we have, we have two new patrons this week, don't we? Would you like to tell everyone about our new patrons? So we have uh, Kate, and I'm probably going to mispronounce your second name. I'm really sorry. It's either Swed or Swede. Um, so Kate, welcome to the tribe. And we've also got my buddy Luke Condor, who has joined in and is uh, getting involved. So um, we also had our Patreon live Q&A yesterday, which again, time lapse. Uh, not yesterday. Oh my God, it's Friday today. Oh, we had that on Monday. Um, so again, time travel, that was like eight days ago. But like, I, I will say I really, really enjoyed um, chatting with everyone, particularly that week. Like I always do. But we went really sort of deep on um, like what it is to be a writer, like some of the people's difficulties and problems and stuff, and just kind of banded together as, as, as a team to answer those questions. So thanks to everyone that joined in on that call. Um, it was really like I, re I really enjoyed it. I came away quite inspired by that. Mm. OK, <clears throat> what have you enjoyed this week? Um, I think I said this last week as well, but I'm going to carry on with it. Um, oh, my God god computer really like i said to you before we start recording i'm waiting for this just to start levitating off of the goddamn table i need yeah i need to find a solution anyhow um web, web building again so i've gone through and done like a massive overhaul on some of my pages on my website there's still more to do but because of the photo shoot that i had with um my buddy ed from last month photography a couple of weeks ago i've got like loads of uh, pictures that are really useful and I've just basically just relayed out the page and I'm trying to make it so that it's easy accessible to see like what's available how I can help people um the different things that are on offer and yeah I'm just I'm just like really enjoying playing with the Elementor Builder and the creator and, and throwing some stuff together um so yeah I, I did a big overhaul of the help for writers page I've got a page on there for the self-publishing blueprint which is um dannywalkers.com slash blueprint um and yeah, like, like I said, I've got a few more because I want to bring it all in line and make sure it's consistent across the website, but that's an ongoing project. But it's just, it's quite therapeutic. Um, it engages the design things that I like. Um, I'm also marketing background, so it's also really sort of strategically interesting to try and work out best how to layer a website and make sure that the important things are coming through and the stuff that is important but isn't sort of the first point of call works and that it's sort of leading people down the, the right trail. So yeah, that's all on there and I'm very, very happy with that. How about you? Uh, well, and I have to say, I am very impressed with your website. It is super slick and sexy. Oh, and um, well, you know, credit where credit's due, I suppose. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, no, I was very impressed with your website. And uh, I basically think you should probably start selling your skills because, wow. I mean, yeah, if anyone mm -hmm. does want to get in touch, then go for it. I'll, I'll first talk. Not that I, I want to be a web designer, but I, yeah, I, am, I do enjoy it. <laughs> Okay, so the two th I have enjoyed two things very quickly. The first one is writing the the, the short story, the um, <clears throat> the freebie bonus epilogue, because it was just fun, and it's amazing how when you have fun, it just goes so quickly, and I just smashed it mm -hmm. out. So I'm like, I just I need to try and make writing fun always, because I think when writing is fun, I write faster, like considerably faster. Yeah. So yeah, that was fun. And then the other thing is the uh, Jupiter's Legacy, I want to say. Um, so I've been watching it with my wife uh, and it's a, it, if you like Marvel, I think you'll like this. And it's, I don't want to tell you too much, but it's basically a, a um, kind of set in our world and it's split time 
So some of these superheroes are like 120 years old or something. Um, and they are now grey, but it's obvious that they age slower than normal humans. And half of the story is told in the present day with what's happening with... <clears throat> the heroes and villains now and and they've all had kids so like there's now more superheroes there's like a lot of superheroes and then half of the series is told from 120 years ago like in sort of like you have like western america and then you have like like i want to say victorian america except it's not victorian because that was the uk but you know like that kind of time period 1800s 1900s that kind of time period um <clears throat> and it's and what happens and how they got their powers. And so we're, I don't know, we must be like, I would say three quarters of the way through the series now. And it is so good. It's so good that I got pissy <laughs> because my wife was tired and wanted to go to sleep and didn't want to watch anymore. And I was like, but I want to watch more. I think it's one of those series that I would have just like watched until the morning. Uh, but anyway. Alrighty. Oh, good. <clears throat> Weekly confessional. And I don't know what I'm supposed to do. Do you have it with you? Sasha will start reading Keepers and record more of the villain's audiobook. Oh, oh, oh. So here is my completed read of Keepers. I have. No, you meant to it. start reading it, so you failed. You're not meant to finish it. Oh. You're meant to start. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, I finished it. So too bad, buddy. Uh, <clears throat> I finished it, and yesterday I recorded five summary chapters. Uh, and I have also edited them. So I've done a bit more work. So they are now ready to go for proofing and then they'll go for mastering. Nice. Um, and today, this afternoon, I think I'm going to record two chapters, two full chapters rather than summary chapters. So that should be good. So yeah, how about you, buddy? I will promote self-publishing blueprint and look at when our next take time off and finish critiquing the side characters book. And yeah, I took all of those off. So uh, self-publishing blueprint, I started promoting on Monday. I've got some stuff scheduled and lined up to continue going out. Um, I've been on a couple of podcasts to promote it and time off. I'm looking at the second full week of August, which falls into the summer holiday. So I'm going to, I need to have conversations with them. Um, my boy's mama to work out how that's going to work in terms of that but in terms of that week off that's that's what i'm doing um and then yeah i finished the critique read of side characters and handed all the notes over to you earlier this week so that's all done awesome all righty Com uh, comments okay so last week uh was question it was episode 58 and the question was what are your three core values Yanni put, I love this episode. You both are authentically you, and I don't want either of you to change at all. Aww. Between the two of you, you've changed my entire writing life. Aww. Yeah, that's it, Sasha. Uh, when it comes to my values or what sums me up, I struggle to pin it down because I don't tend to look inward often. I know I'm an empathetic person and have been told I'm a good listener, but I don't think that counts as a value. In the future, I'd love to be seen as someone who just went for it, did the thing, even though she was crapping her pants. This doesn't answer the question. But I think it kind of does because it does tease at some of those core fundamental things that make you you. Mm. So sometimes it's about taking that sort of more abstract concept and then just narrowing it down to a word or a thought or a feeling um, that represents you. All right, aggressive. <sighs> wow. It's happening this morning. There are ghosts in there. Area. Little ghosties. Uh, Nathan says, I seriously love this episode. My three core values are helpful, surprising and constant improvement. Holly says, I really enjoyed this episode too. I need to insight on number two and number three, but my big core value is freedom, financial mm. freedom, location freedom, and time freedom. Edwin says, I'm stumped. First, I need to figure out the language I need to use to define what a core value is. It doesn't help that Sasha Black spun my brain around by having an epiphany reading my response to last episode's question. I'm supposed to be the one having epiphanies listening to you. Yeah, sorry about that, but <laughs> it is what yeah. it is. Maggie says, uh, bright minds, grey hair and dark humour, which I absolutely love because that's very, very specific to you. Uh, Luke is similar, which is, uh, so the three core values come down to these sentences. To tell stories that are loved all over the world, to be the underdog and to strive for uniqueness in everything I do. Mm -hmm. And then one more. That definitely. Uh, Meg, sorry, I just, that, 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 those are definitely, like, I don't know him hardly well at all but obviously i know just from things that you have said and obviously i've heard him talk uh in the nice things camp. yeah <laughs> but um no but like the uniqueness is definitely him like and that's in his mm -hmm. work as well which i think is amazing so i love those values 
100%. Uh, and one more, Meg, uh, which is finding meaning, freedom and belonging and acceptance. Belonging slash acceptance. In that day. Yeah, they definitely strike me as uh, fully I accurate. Those. Yeah, I do too. Mm -hmm. All right, question of the week, sunshine. Mm. Well, I have alluded a little bit to um, the question and you started off by saying about revelations, which I think is funny. And then I was, <clears throat> and then I, I sort of mentioned about how like the revelations and things that I've been having. Anyway, so the, the, the question is, and I now don't know if I've worded it quite, quite the way I want you to answer it. But anyway, we're just going to go for it. How do you soul search? I love these silences. You. <laughs> but you love me. I hate you. Um... <laughs> Like instinctively, my head goes to like, when don't I soul search? Like, I'm, I'm definitely a classic. I don't know. If, I don't have to overthink it, but I'm always thinking, and in pretty much, you know, everything I do, I seem to sort of bring things back to bigger questions of like, like I'm, I'm the type of person that when I used to get the bus on the way to and from work, I'd be looking out the window and just looking at everything and just going like there's nothing within sight that isn't touched by the hand of man. Like nothing, like I'll look at the sidewalk or the pavement as we call it in the UK um, and look at like the bricks or the stone and stuff and be like, think to back where, you know, where was that mine from? Where, where was the resource? Where's, what's the quarry? Like what's the state of the place that made the bricks that we like walk on and things. So that's, that's kind of just an, like a tiny insight into like constantly how my mind is thinking. Um, I mean, when it comes to soul searching, I think, I think probably it's best to define like my definition of what soul searching is. And for me, it's, it's working out where you fit in the world mm -hmm. in like the grander scheme of things. And, you know, what is, what is the real value of the things that you're doing? Um, and I, I, I do struggle with this question a lot because it's very um like there's an arrogance I feel in <laughs> this is yeah this is gonna go deep just FYI like grab your snorkel grab your mask like mm -hmm. um it, I, I feel like there's an arrogance in humanity to go we have to have purpose there has to be a meaning to life because we're here for like a fleeting amount of time and then we're gone and ultimately <laughs> ultimately this is yeah ultimately in the next like hundred thousand hundred thousand yeah, what like, however many years like all of this will be gone because that is just a way of things that is just what happens so when it comes to the things that i do i i often try and look at like the value that i'm having to those sort of closely within my circle i try and ensure that like i'm a positive influence i'm like in some way adding value to the people i care about's lives um but then on sort of a wider scale i i'm one of those people that likes to see the impact of the things that i do I think this is one of my um, latest revelations in terms of things that I'm doing, because with fiction and releasing books out into the world, you are hitting people and you do get uh, reader emails back and you can see sort of like the impact that you have with your imaginary world. Um, but the the feedback and the sort of, uh, yeah, well, the feedback that I'm getting from lots more of the non-fiction stuff I do is much more direct and it's much more personal and it's much more like relevant to the real world, which brings me more joy like i love writing fiction i'm not like i'm not saying it in any way i'm gonna get away from that because i absolutely love writing fiction and i love reaching readers but just a lot of what i've done through my life it's always been a case of me trying to like consider the other person and that was one of my problems when i was kind of coming out of university and over the last 10 years is that i would give so much of myself that i'd leave nothing left so now it's a case of I'm spending so much time working out how can I be the best be me that I can be while still having enough to bring to others. Um, so that kind of gives a bit of perspective of like how my mind works and, and where I sort of sit on soul searching in terms of how I actually do the soul searching, thinking time, trying to get 
perspective um listening to other people's stories like it's huge for me because it gives you a, a glimpse into how other people think how other people see the world and understanding that your lens is just one lens like the person sitting next to you in the same job that you are is going to have an entirely different experience of life so it's it's working out my placement and how i can then reach out like it, i think it's just going to keep circling back to the same thing it's perspective it's where can i bring value to the world but understanding the limitations of myself and trying to work out where i can continually improve to grow those and become stronger um like films films are often like really good for me i do like i do love a good motivational film or like documentary where it like really shows sort of like the heart of like you know positive humanity um because uh, I, yeah I'm a, I'm a i'm a positive guy and there are so many negative outlets in the world and like even just on the daily news it's just it's rare that you'll have like this person survived cancer or you know this person like helped a duckling cross the road it's always like stab murder stab murder other things like it's it's, it's horrible stuff and people surround themselves in that and it just bleeds into to your mind and yeah i feel like i'm getting rambly but yeah i'm gonna put i'm gonna pause there i might have more to add but i don't know if that kind of answers your question any answer you give me is is the right answer because that is the purpose of these questions is just to provoke thought into oneself in order to improve so you know i do um, i do massively love mountains <laughs> and lakes okay oh oh okay i see i see <laughs> i yeah, also like, love those two things yeah when you can get to them like when um, we went to edinburgh for the 20 books edinburgh conference like one morning i got up at like four and climbed up uh was, was it st michael's mount no that's the thing down in cornwall um the big the big mount that was nearby where we stayed i climbed up there at like four or five in the morning and watched the sunrise just by myself and it was just beautiful because you get to see like the city the town like you get to see like you know the world working and it was it's that kind of stuff that really like gives you a bookmark in in your life and goes now you can stop and think yeah so also, I gave up the news like 10 years ago uh, because I just couldn't stand like I would get to I work and I'd be angry. angry. Yeah, that that I yeah. was getting when I this I gave up when I was in the day job, uh, which was controversial because I worked in like local government. And so you had to be Ooh. up on politics and, and the news. And I just I was like, no, fuck this. I'm going to work angry every single day. And it's because, um, you know, it was filling my brain with shit. Anyway, I'm not going to rant about the news. Um <laughs> so I, I asked the question because as you know I've been feeling lost for a little while and, mm -hmm. and I still feel lost and I and I feel like I'm at a juncture and I don't know if some of that is because I am watching what you're doing from afar like one one or two steps removed and we are mirrors for each other because you know we are we provoke those we ask the questions each week and then also like help support nurture each other to you know grow our businesses and I've had a few people say to me it feels like you're at a t-junction or like you're at a juncture and and I think I'm paused because I don't know which way to turn and I'm not even sure that left or right has a has a road label and that's the problem like I can't I don't know whether to turn left or right and, and left or right doesn't have road signs so I'm not sure what left or right is and so that's why I was asking because normally I think a lot of my soul searching happens when we go on holiday or we travel because uh -huh. you know you're out of your situation and it just gives you that time and the head even though I'm not like this is the weirdest thing I, when I, when we go away on holiday we're just like swimming in the sea together or we're having lovely dinner meals together or we're you know having a gin and tonic on the porch or whatever and so I am not doing any intentional soul searching or thinking and yet I come away and I have done exactly that I always come away with an answer and so I don't I, I don't have I this period of feeling lost has extended itself because I haven't done that we haven't gone away I haven't had time like out and um so that's why I wanted to to know because I don't I don't know I need to resolve this or to take action or do something to resolve this but the problem is it's like I'm looking 
in I'm looking through fog and I can't there are things that I want to do long term that I don't necessarily think I should be doing right now because it would be too much of a, a of a turn and then there are other things that like you know I want to do more fiction or, or I want to you know do more non-fiction or I want to get courses or I want to do finish my audiobooks and I don't know so yeah like I definitely feel lost and like I'm not sure what I should be doing anymore and I think part of that is because we've been doing this for two years now and that is the honeymoon period is officially over you know you're going to survive um you know so now what now what now what is next and yes I have these gigantic goals but like you said they are a long way away and yeah I don't know so I haven't really answered your question other than uh, my question other than to say uh, I used to do a lot of soul searching when we traveled and that's just not an option right now and so I don't know I don't know yeah I just I'm lost and I'm looking for a way I'm looking for ideas for how I can take action to unlose myself does that make sense yeah absolutely i think you've already answered your question i've said this to you before what do you mean i've already answered my question what you said the best time when you self search is when you travel or when you do things you were able to travel in the uk those those options are available yeah that's i not... think i think just i just literally think that like a week away from being in the house is the best thing you can do right now considering since the start of this pandemic there has been no break from the work the move like homeschooling all that kind of stuff like you said it's been like over two years since your last break i think or like nearly two years so even like a long weekend or you know a week just in a hotel in yorkshire or i don't know like scotland or cornwall or wales or somewhere away where you can see like a beautiful part of the uk even though it's not your conventional like traveling abroad and whatnot it's just getting away from where you currently are there is no break because where you're like because i know with moving the room around that you're currently and obviously that gave like a little bit of like a change of mentality because it's fresh it's new and you can like it, it tricks the brain into thinking that like it's a different environment and you can reset the rules in your mind mm. but then there needs to be that break like that week off i took um a couple of weeks back like has just cleared so much stuff out of my system and that doesn't mean that things have gotten like infinitely easier it's still definitely like a slug but just taking that time off removed me enough that i can think about other things and i think that i think a part a, a lot of the revelations and things i'm having at the minute are part of the tail end of that time off because it's allowed things to percolate it's allowed me to look at things slightly differently and then really start to like feel my way forward see my way forward and then start to like create action plans mm. because again the stuff that i'm looking at now isn't exactly what we were looking at when we were strategizing and doing strategy days like a few weeks or months ago yeah but that's not a problem for me because it also still goes towards the goals that i set for this year in terms of like income and sort of product and whatnot so i generally I, you mentioned it twice when you were saying about how like that's one of the key things that you can do i just think you need to pick a date like a week talk to chloe make it happen and go here it is like hire a freaking castle in aberdeen i don't know but you like, can't, yeah do, i mean everything is so thing, booked like, and expensive in the uk now that's the problem everybody's already booked up also i just want to go away <laughs> just, i've offered you a free holiday i know i it's i know, <laughs> just, I know it's not your usual but I, the offer is there <sighs> And I'm not going to explain that any further to people who are listening. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. I need some perspective. I'm waiting mm -hmm. for them to put Holland on the uh, on the, the travel list. Because, yeah. And the Netherlands is not on the green list yet. And then when, when they do that, I am gone. I will be going to see my dad. And the, the, he lives like by the beach. So we, you're also a person that you do like to be in control of your time of your work of the things that you do mm. and in waiting isn't that just creating further anxiety for you because you don't know when that, that's just an unknown that's like a, a variable that you can't control as to when you can go to holland yeah so for me that would that would just add extra angst because it could be next week it could be like a year from now you need yeah, like a definitive, how can I... this is when i'm taking time off i just <laughs> 
feel like there has to be another way other than time off. Time off stresses yeah, me is. out. <laughs> but it stresses also, my achiever what, out. Also, if you go back and listen to the episode the week before I actually take that week off, like you will feel or hear how resistant I was to taking that week off because of the amount of things I had to do. <laughs> and I managed, I managed to take the entire week off bar recording NLA. Yeah. I mean, I can't, I literally can't until I've sent off the manuscript to the editor. I'm not going to take time off. Once I've given side characters to the editor, then I know I'm going to hit the deadline that I've said for the end of July. Mm -hmm. Like, cause even if I do no marketing, I know it's ready. I can put it up and, and like, I am now accountable for that date. So I'm trying, I can't knowingly take time off until I have done that. Um, but yeah, maybe I will after that. I don't know. Well, I'll, oh yeah. I mean, you will, otherwise I'm banning you complaining about it. <laughs> this is meant to be about soul searching, not for pushing me to take fucking time off work. So you can soul search. Oh, you are so tiresome. Let's finish this episode. All do. right. So how are we leveling up <laughs> our business this week? Oh, so I prepared this week. Um, I am, so I need to put in some time to actually sit down and plan out. I'm basically in the process of creating a 90 day book camp in which I take authors from uh, idea to ending their first draft. And it's going to be sort of like a 90 day program of like videos and Zoom calls and whatnot. But what I need to do is just sit down and actually plan logistically how that should look. Uh, I'm not going to say I'm going to have the plan done, but I definitely need to put in some time to sit and start getting the wheels turning on that. Uh, I also, uh, I'm in the very, very early stages of hiring a VA for my social media. So um, I've got a conversation with her this week or next week even. Um, so I'd like to action that and start getting that ball rolling because um, like it's just marketing. It's just a pain in the ass for me at the minute because of how much other things I have to do. Um, also, next week in the UK, you can sit in cafes again. So I'm going to go to the closest cafe and start doing some writing in there in the mornings. And I'm going to update at least one page of my website because I want to bring it all in uniformly. Update your website page. One page of my website. Update one website page. Okie dokie. That is a lot of things for you this week. Um, uh -huh. So for me, I am going to work on CP edits. So your edits and Kate's edits. Um, and I am also going to sit in a cafe and uh, I think I might try and like sit in cafes and work on words every morning uh except i'm not going to do that next week because i'm editing but then like once that's out of the way i think i might like try and just work on fiction every single morning uh, i don't know it depends how many things i can hold in my brain i say that now and seems like a good idea and yeah. then i'm going to try and do it and have five thousand other things that i'm doing and not be able to do it um but yeah so wow. i'm also going to go take what? a break mm -hmm. go on why are you such a knob this is, this is like, this is... Why are you so resistant? Because I get so many energy pennies by doing. Like, that is my achiever, by getting work done. Like, even when I go on holiday, I like to do, like, just a little bit in the morning because it makes me happy. So it's not... That. But do it outside of that room. I will have a word with you about this afterwards. This is... Okay. I will talk to you about this offline. Um, Uh-oh, I'm in trouble. <laughs> 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 I'm glad you can tell. He's angry. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to work on my critique edits. I'm going to sit in a cafe and um might see you there. I feel like I've got I've got a lot of other things to do, but I just don't want to add anything else. Like my one goal for next week is I'm looking at my to-do list. My one goal for next week is to get get the CP stuff as much done as possible. So yeah, that's it. Okay, so question of the week this week is how do you soul search? And we will see you next week. Bye bye. Bye. -bye. Hungry for more? If you enjoyed this podcast, you can hear more of my angelic accent and Dan's dulcet tones on our other podcasts. 
For more of me, check out the Great Writer Share podcast. For more of me, listen to the Rebel Author podcast. We'll be back next week holding each other to account as Dan and Sasha become Next Level Authors. We're going to have a competition. Someone's going to win. <laughs> oh, oh, I'm hysterically There's talking. your Easter egg. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> I can't. This is hysteria. I'm so fucking tired. Okay. <clears throat> Have you seen four lions? I always, I always hoped that when you had a breakdown, I'd be recording. <laughs> you right? It's my wife. Hello, wife. My favorite. Right.